Hello again, my math friends. This is Mrs. Schlecht. And in this video, we are going to look at independent and dependent variables. So you know that before we get started, there's a few things you should go get so that you can be successful for this activity. First, you're going to need your Envision book. Remember, we're still in volume one. Second, you're going to need your math notebook to take great notes. Third, you're going to need that pencil. And fourth, last but never ever least, Mrs. Schleck's most favorite, that positive math attitude. All right, my friends, so this video goes with lesson 4-8, which again is going over these dependent and independent variables. You'll find that key concepts page on page 237. All right, so there's two vocabulary words that we'll be using a lot in this lesson, the dependent variable and the independent variable. Now, first, let's talk about variable. Variable is something we've been talking a whole bunch about in algebra, right? We've been using different letters to represent all the different possibilities uh, that these different variables might have as a value, right? And we know that those variables can change, right? It's not a constant. Constants stay the same, right? But those variables change. But Perhaps you're thinking, Mrs. Schlecht, this is like some science stuff. Yeah, it is, because you also have dependent and independent variables in science. But guess what, my friends? It is also in math. All right, my friends. So on page 236, example number one has some great definitions for this. But let's start talking about independent variable. An independent variable makes a change. And it makes a change because it wants to make a change, right? It's an independent variable. It kind of does its own thing. Now, the flip side of that with the dependent variable is that it changes because this change was made, right? So the dependent variable really relies or it's dependent on whatever the heck this independent variable is doing, all right? Again, review that example number one because it has some great definitions. But now let's get into your book. Let's look at page 238 and number five. So what we're trying to do in these problems, my friends, is it will give us a little scenario over here, and then we need to identify, well, which one's the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. So our first scenario is the number of hours worked, and we're using H to represent that variable, um, and the amount of money that's earned, and we're using M for money. So think about it this way, my friends. Which one can change on its own? Which one can go up? or down, and then which one will change because of the change over here? So our independent variable is going to be the number of hours worked, and the dependent variable is the money you're actually going to make. Think about it this way. The more time that you spend working, the bigger your paycheck. And on the flip side of that, the fewer hours that you work, the less money that you are going to make. So the number of hours that you work is our independent variable, or the letter H. And the dependent variable is the amount of money that you make. And we're using M for that one. Moving right along to problem number six, still on page 238. So again, we're trying to identify the dependent and the independent variable. Our next scenario is the number of shelves, S, in a bookcase and the number of books that can fit in that bookcase. So think about it like this, my friends. What can go bigger on its own, and then that will impact over here, or what can be smaller on its own, and then that will have the impact over here. Hmm. So in this scenario, the number of shelves in the bookshelf, that's going to be independent. And the amount of books that can be supported on those shelves will be dependent, right? Think about it. The bigger my bookcase is, the more shelves that it has, the more room for books that we'll be able to have, right? And on the flip side of that, the fewer, the sh smaller number of shelves that we have in our bookcase, we're not going to be able to have as many books, right? So again, the independent would be the number of shelves. The dependent will be, well, how many books can fit in that bookcase? All right, my friends. So the next one that we're going to look at together is on page 238, number 10. So in this scenario, it's talking about the number of hours that you spend driving at a speed of R miles per hour. Now you're probably like, um, why is it R and not S? Great question, because this is a rate, 
right? Miles per hour, that's a rate. That's why it's using R as the variable there. So think about it like this. If we have to go 500 miles, we have to, I don't know, go somewhere 500 miles away from Ridgetop Middle School. If we are doing that, what's going to determine how long we spend in the car or how fast we go? Which one's going to be an independent variable and which one will be a dependent variable? So our speed, how fast we're driving, that determines how long we have to spend in the car, right? We have to go 500 miles. If I'm going only one mile per hour, holy moly, that time is going to be ginormous, right? But on the flip side of that, let's say you're like Speedy Gonzalez and you're like going 100 miles per hour, which by the way, illegal, way too fast, my friends. But let's just say for the sake of this example, that's what you're doing. If you're going super duper fast, then the amount of time that you have to spend in your vehicle, that's going to go down. So the dependent variable is the amount of time that your fabulous road trip is going to take. And why is that dependent? Well, because it depends on how fast you're driving. All right, my friends, so that was just a quick run through with independent and dependent variables. If you have any other questions, please let me know.